If you have your Bibles, I'm going to turn it to Luke chapter 15, verse 11. You can put your thumb there, and then we're going to go to Ezekiel 37, verse 1 through 3. Amen, amen. <clears throat> it is quite a lengthy read. I do apologize for making you stand this long, but I need all of this, and it's going to be set the, the setting and the context of what we're going to be talking about this morning. Luke 15, chapter 11 says, and he said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that faith falleth to me. And, it, and he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his field to feed swine. And when and he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat. And no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's house have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father. I will say unto my father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. And I am and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe, the best robe, and put it on him. And put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. And bring hither the fattest calf and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they begin to be merry. Amen. I'm going to uh, skip already. Uh, I was going to read the rest, but we'll cover that later. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 through 3. And it says this, the hand of the Lord was upon me, and he carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which, I was, which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Amen, amen. Here for the next few moments, I would like to preach on this topic, a revival of restoration, a revival of restoration. And I feel the spirit of the Lord in this place this morning. Let's lift up our hands and once again, let's just ask God to speak to us individually. Lord, I thank you for another opportunity to be in your house. Lord, I thank you for the spirit I feel in this place, God. I thank you for every individual who's in this house, who are going to be watching, who may even be listening to this, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you allow your word to go in and go to the very place that it needs to be and that you plant that seed in their life, Lord, and you allow that seed to gain some root. And I, I, I can, uh, rebuke any distraction, any confusion that may try to come in and choke that seed and, and go ahead and choke out your word and I'd allow your word to do what it needs to do in your life God our life Lord we'll give you all the honor all the glory for what you're about to do in this place in Jesus name we pray amen 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 you may be seated this morning we serve a God of second chances we serve a God of third chances Four chances, fifth chances. I could go on and go on. Don't get confused with the suit that you see this morning. I am someone who needs the mercy of God. I don't know about you, but I'm, I know I belong to a body of Christ that we need the mercy of God. And if we were to be honest just a little, if we would just go ahead and put down our, 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 our Holy Ghost just uh, sophistication and just be real for a second here, we would all understand that it is by God's grace and God's mercy that we are here today. And as you read the Word of God, you will find 
that the people of God that he used to bring down kingdoms, to kill giants, and to preach the salvation message were flawed people. The one thing I love about the word of God, if I could get just a little bit more monitor up here. The one thing I love about the word of God is simply this. It does not hide the sins of the characters in the Bible. It does not try to make it look like everybody had it all figured out. It doesn't try to try to put create an illusion that uh, in order for God to put his hand upon your life, in order for God to use you, in order for you of God, and I feel the Holy Ghost right now, in order for God to go ahead and breathe upon your life, uh, that you need to have some type of, uh, of, uh, of etiquette, you need to have some type of education, and you need to have some type of pedigree on your life. Can I tell you this morning, all you need is God's hand on your life. All you need is God to say, hey, this is my child. All you need is God. All you need is his mercy. All you need is Jesus. Oh, I could already feel I come against that lie of the enemy trying to tell you, hey, you could not be nothing. God can't do nothing with my life. There's nothing he could do with my what I have to offer. Can I tell you, if all you have to offer is choices, go ahead and choose him. Go ahead and choose him. You may not have much to offer. You may not have much in, in your bag to give him, but you have choices. Go ahead and choose him. We are all flawed people. The scripture I'm about to quote is often quoted, and it's a a very famous passage of scripture, and it should because there is truth. And it says, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound things that which are mighty. You see, the man who inscribed this message was not just a man writing under inspiration, but a man that was writing out of experience. Paul was a man who imprisoned the saints of the Most High. Paul was a man who oversaw the stoning of a young minister named Stephen. Paul had some baggage. Paul understood what it was like to be out of sync with God's will in his life. Paul understood what it was like to come to the cross, to come to the house of God with some real life issue. He was a man who found himself at odds with Christ. But he also found himself in the grace of God and God restored his life. The Acts 2.38 message is a response to the question that was asked by the crowd on the day of Pentecost. As Peter stood up with the other disciples and preached Jesus, this, that message is the message of salvation. It informs us how to apply salvation to our life. We must first repent. We must be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of our sins. And we must receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And if you continue to read that book of Acts, as you will continue to find story after story of the Holy Ghost falling, the initial sign of the Holy Ghost would be them speaking in other tongues. This is the message of hope. This is the message of hope for mankind. This is a message of restoration. This is a message of restoration. Why? Not only because mankind was being restored through the salvation message, restored to its original purpose, but even the man who stood up and preached that same message that very morning, 50 days before, 50 days before, denied Christ. 50 days before, had didn't want nothing to do with him. 50 days before, he had fear enough to lie to somebody and tell them, hey, I got nothing to do with those people. Don't associate me with them. 50 days before, he betrayed Christ. But on this day, on this day, he stood, restored. God restored him, and he preached the message that you and I, you and I here this morning with all our baggage, with all our sin, we can be restored. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, 
Lord Jesus. God restored him. God restored him. This is a message of restoration. Why are we here this morning? Because we have been restored. If you have not had the Holy Ghost yet, if you have not spoken in tongues yet, if you have not went down in his name yet, can I tell you, that can change. And your position with God can be restored. See, God made man in the very beginning to fellowship with him. That was our purpose. It was our status with him. When man sinned, it took us out of right standing with God. No longer did we have access the way that we once had. Sin destroyed our position, our status with him. We lost what was rightfully ours. His plan was to establish his kingdom here on earth and give dominion to man. This was his plan. It is in the garden that after man had sinned, God, that sin had entered into the life of Adam and Eve, God cursed that serpent who, who deceived Eve. And the woman, he tells the serpent in Genesis 3, he says, I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and it shall bruise his heel. What was a curse to the serpent was a promise to mankind. From that time, God moved upon prophets, and they would speak about a Messiah that would come to redeem and to restore his people. There's hundreds of prophecies that would speak about Jesus but that were written. He would bring a new covenant. He would be rejected. He would be born of a virgin. He would be a suffering servant. He would be called out of Egypt. He would be called God's son. He would be betrayed by 30 pieces of silver. He would be a willing sacrifice. He would be a count, wonderful counselor, the mighty God, everlasting father, and the prince of peace. Galatians says, but when fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Jesus had a purpose. He had a purpose. He had a mission. He was not just come here on vacation. He didn't come just to to walk about and have an experience and and do just a little experimental experimental time with mankind. He didn't just come just to have, uh, 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 just to get out of heaven, just to experience and see what it would be like. But he had a purpose and he had a mission. Luke 4 says, 418, this is Jesus. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And the Bible says, and he closed the book. And he gave it to the minister and sat down. And everybody was looking at him. And he said, this day, this day, the scripture is fulfilled in your ear. What was he telling him? Hey, with the presence that you're in, I've come to restore. I've come to heal. My purpose is you. My purpose is you. I lost you in the garden, but I'm here for you. I wonder if I had a church who understood the mercy. Do I have anybody here who can testify with me the goodness of God, his restoration power, what he can do in a life? That's it right now. Go ahead and praise him. Go ahead and give him glory. That's it. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. 2 Corinthians says, to wit, that God was in Christ. I love this scripture. God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. Oh, he had a purpose. He had a purpose. It was you. It was me with all of our baggage, with all of our sin, with all of our flaws, with all of our shortcomings, with all our inabilities, who we are, who we're not, everything. He was after you. Jesus' purpose was to restore mankind back 
to our right standing with God. So God himself robed himself in flesh and walked among us. That flesh hung on the cross and paid the price for our sins that we might be restored. That me, we, you and I might be restored. Romans 5 says, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled by God, to God, by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. In the Garden of Eden, he said, if real quick, he told Adam and Eve, if you eat of this fruit, you shall surely die. The human body, were, the human were made up of uh, the body, soul, and spirit. The human body and the mind, the soul did not die, but our spirit died. One word definition for death is separation. Separation from mind, body, soul, and spirit. All those things are separated. No longer you're not alive no more. At that time, the spirit was we died and was separated from God. And God came to restore that spirit. This is why he came. His ministry was restoration. His whole purpose was to restore was to come after you and I. We have to believe this. We have to believe it above anything else. I understand the lies. Of the, when I was really young, I used to tell my mom, I have a crazy, crazy backstory. And I, she would always try to get me to, to, you know, get myself right with God. And I'd always tell her, Mother, you conceived me in sin. This is who I am. I have no, I have no other purpose. This is just what I'm going to do. This is just how I'm going to live my life because I, it's just a part of me. It's just in me. I didn't understand that what I was saying was true. What I was saying, my carnality was real, and, and it was part of who I was. But I didn't understand the same reason that I, that Christ came was the same reason I needed to be born again. My yes, I was born in this fallen nature. Yes, I have this sin nature I got to deal with. Yes, I have tendencies that lean to the side. But that's why he came, that I might have the opportunity to be born again. And I can activate the spirit in my life that I can live fruitfully in him and through him. His ministry was restoration. His ministry was restoration. All along, he wanted to restore what he lost in the garden. This morning, I've come to tell this church there's two things that I felt God lay on my heart. God wants, not only wants to restore lives today, but he is going to cover this house with a mantle of restoration For others, for people, for lost loved ones, for backsliders, for people who've walked away. There's going to be a mantle resting upon this house. And God is calling you to the ministry of reconciliation. And he's going to use you to restore people with his power. Through his power, he's going to do the work. But it's up to us. we got to understand. we got to help him and restore the lives of those that are lost. Let's lift up our hands right now. Let's lift up our hands. I want you to receive that word right now. Go ahead and receive that word right now. Oh, they're going to come from the east. They're going to come from the west. They're going to come from the north. They're going to come from the south. And if we have the ministry of Christ and we have his purpose, we got to understand his purpose was to restore. And that is our purpose is to restore man and help God to be that help to be a work alongside God and help people restore to their purpose. Oh, Riaba, 
Let's continue. Just come on. Just keep on praying. I feel spirit doing something in this place right now. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, Hey, Amen. You may be seated. Listen to me. The prodigal son, he left his home. He wasted all his money. He found himself in a place of desperation. And let me just input this, interject this. If you're in this place to this morning, you do not have the Holy Ghost, and you have not received what we're talking about, can I tell you, it's only going to happen when desperation sets in. You got to be sick and tired of eating the pigs, that pig slop. You got to be sick and tired of where you're at. You know you're miserable. You, that's why you're here. You're searching for truth. The Bible says, Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth. No man. No man cometh. Listen, the search for truth is a search for Jesus. The search for truth is a search for Jesus. You're searching for the truth of life. Can I tell you, you're searching for him. And when you find Jesus, you find the truth. He found himself in that place of desperation. And he went back. And his father received him and restored him. The remainder of the story is his brother was angry. His brother was not angry that his brother returned. His brother was angry that his father restored him. His brother got angry. He could have been, his brother would have been fine with as if his dad said, hey, you know, you know, this is, you know, John came back and, and, and you know, he's going to be working on the farm, but he's going to, I told him he needs to find his own place to live. His brother would have been fine with that. You know, he's going to be a servant. His brother would have been fine with that. His brother, you know, it's, it, it, you know we're going we're gonna to make, put him through a probational period. And, and we're going we're gonna to put a, a, some, some, some oppression over him and, and try to make him prove himself. And we're going to try. He would have been fine with all of that. But what got him upset and angry was his father fully restored him. Put the best robe on him. Give him my ring. Get the fattest calf. Can I tell you, Souls Harbor, we got to become a church of restoration when they come back. We got to put the best robe on them. We got to kill the fatty calf. We got to put the name on them. Give them the ring. We got to rejoice with them. We got to be merry with them. Hey, your love going to come back. I'm going to rejoice with you. I'm going to shout with you. I'm going to pray with you. I'm going to cry with you. You need to get ready. We better be careful how we handle the children of God that return. We got to better be careful. He died for them just as much as he died for you. He doesn't love you any more than the way he loves them. He loves them just the same. Matter of fact, says, while yet, while they were sinners, Christ died. We want the mercy of God, but we don't want to extend the mercy of God. If we're going to have this revival of restoration, we got to get our mindset ready. When they walk in, I don't care what they look like, what they smell like, what they just how they worship, how they talk. You're in the Father's house. I'm just glad you're here. Let's kill the fatted calf. Let's put the best robe on them. Let's be merry. Another one has been restored. Another one has been restored. Listen, the angels rejoice when one repents. But check this out. 
the angels have no idea what it's like to be redeemed. You know what it's like to be redeemed. If anyone should shout, if anyone should rejoice over one repentant, it should be the church. It should be the church. It should be us. Let their relationship with God be between them and God. Let pastor handle the details. Let him figure all that out. You just love them. You just be here with them. You just pray with them. Get your hands off them. Let God do it. Let God do it. Let God instruct the man of God. You just love. Let us be a church that rejoices that God is still in the business of restoring people. He's still looking for those who have left. He's still looking for those. He's still dealing with those. He's still search, searching. He's still actively seeking. Let's go ahead and rejoice for, for a God who still is dealing with us, who is still looking to restore mankind. Let this church be a church that loves prodigals. Let this be a church that loves healing and restoration. Let this be a church that's going to stand with the man of God and say, Pastor, if you have faith in him, I have faith in him. If you're going to love him, I'm going to love him. Whatever you want to do, Pastor, we're going to follow God's spirit and we're just going to have church. We're going to follow God's spirit and we're just going to have church. We're going to have revival. We're going to pray. We're going to do whatever it takes. We just want to see big kind restored let's lift up our hands right now let's lift up our hands right now Jesus, Jesus, do what you're going to do, Lord. Do what only you can do, Jesus. Do what only you can do, Jesus. Do what only you can do, Jesus. You may be seated. It's going to be a revival of restoration for the prodigals and those who have walked away. But there's also going to be a restoration of callings, of visions dreams, burdens, passions, prayer lives, relationships. God wants to fully restore all. The book of Ezekiel, I read the passage in our text, just the, the beginning part of it. <clears throat> God takes Ezekiel to a valley of dry bones. And he says, God asked Ezekiel, can these bones live? God's asking Souls Harbor this morning. Can these bones live? Ezekiel's response to God needs to be a response of Souls Harbor this morning. Oh, Lord God, thou knowest. If anyone, God, can bring these to life, it's you. If anyone could do anything with these bones, it's you. 
God already knows the answer. All he wants to know, can you release your faith enough when God asks you, can these bones live? Can these dreams be resurrected? Can these anointings be re-poured out? Can these wells be dug up again? Can these prodigals come on? Can they? Will they live? What's going to be your response, Souls Harbor? What's going to be your response? Thou knowest, God. Thou knowest. I'm leaving it in your hand, God. If you call me to this valley, if you call me to this valley of dry bones, and you put me here, and all you're asking me is to have faith, then I'm going to go ahead and release my faith. God, only you know. Now listen. After Ezekiel responds, Ezekiel released his faith and let it go into God's hand. God told him exactly what to do. Prophesy. You tell these bones. And I'm just going to read this to you. And I want you to be thinking about some of the things the Spirit of the Lord is already beginning to put on your heart. Some of your lost relationships. Maybe your prayer life has dried up. Maybe there's some anointings that you have kind of just allowed to, to kind of just go to the wayside. Some burdens, some callings, some different things. Maybe you don't have the Holy Ghost this morning. But I'm going to tell you what the Word of God says. He says unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the Word. Of the Lord that saith the Lord God unto these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and ye shall live, and I will lay sin you upon you, and I will bring upon flesh upon you, and cover you with the skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. The rest of this, that chapter, Ezekiel says, so I prophesy. He heard the word of the Lord. Listen, it's not our own verse. And we, have, we, don't have no, we don't have no special powers in our fingertips or our word. It has nothing to do with us. His word. All we're going to do is repeat his word. Can these bones live again? Lord, you know. The only one who could do it is you. So honestly, God, it's up to you. Then he says, okay, I say, okay, since it's up to me, this is my will. Now I want you to repeat after me. And he begins to prophesy. Now listen. As he again says, you need some more prophecy. And just, just listen to this. Thus saith the Lord, this said unto me, prophesy unto the winds. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, come from the four, four winds, O breath, O breath upon the slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them. And they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, this bones are the whole house of Israel. <clears throat> what we're about to do in this place, we're going to be prophesy over some dead things. But we're also going to allow the word of God to go out to the whole house of Soul Harbor. And he's going to be bringing people in through restoration who are going to be fulfilling the needs of this church for the body of Christ. Through the power of restoration, bringing the dead things that once were dead, bringing them back to life. And he's going to fill his house. And the body of Christ that is needed to evangelize this city. For this community, through you, will be brought back through restoration. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off from our parts. Therefore, <clears throat> prophesy and say to them, thus saith the Lord God, behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened up your graves, all my people, and brought you up out of your graves, and I shall put my spirit 
in you and ye shall live and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall you know that the Lord, I the Lord have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. Let's stand. Musicians, please come. See, bones are evidence that something once lived. Bones are something, are evidence that something once had purpose. Bones are evidence that there was once direction and blood flowing that there was life. See, many times in our life, we see the bones in our life. <clears throat> and all we see is what's left. All we see is what is left after the life has dried up, after the blood stopped flowing, after there was no purpose, after direction had waned, after... And we're sitting there with all these bones that we have collected that no longer, that once had purpose, that once understood where they were going, that once had a beating heart. <clears throat> these dead things are going to be brought to life this morning by the Spirit of God. Listen to me. I'm telling you, I feel this so strong. Dead dreams. Dead visions, dead ministries, dead relationships. These bones that we carry, Souls Harbor, he came to restore. But he wants to know your response. Can these bones live? There's going to be a revival of restoration. He's going to restore lives. He's going to restore dreams. He's going to restore ministries. He's going to restore lost loved ones. He's going to restore personal burdens. He's going to do it this morning. And he wants to do it. His question is to you, can these bones live? This is what we're going to do. Your response is going to be in faith. The way you're going to show that faith is you're going to bring those bones this morning to this altar. You bring them up. You walk them up. You know where, I'm, you know where the Spirit is touching you right now. You know these things that you've looked upon and said there's some remnants of what's left. This used to have purpose. This used to have life. This used to have a dream. I used to be on fire for God. I used to have a prayer life. I used to fast. I used to have my own convictions. I want to be with God. I may not be where I'm at with God. I mean, you may not have the Holy Ghost this morning. Let God resurrect that dead spirit in you this morning. <clears throat>